It's OzCon 2013. I'm Rachel Romeliotis, Senior Editor at O'Reilly Media, and I'm here with Florian Haas. He's an OpenStack guru at Hastexo. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. So for those of us that didn't make it to your tutorial, yeah. t give us a synopsis. My tutorial was called the OpenStack Tour de Force. It was a tutorial that was aimed at both novices and intermediates in uh, OpenStack. And what we did was over the course of three and a half hours, we built up an OpenStack cloud from scratch. Oh, wow. And that is in three and a half hours, that's something that obviously includes explaining a lot of things about OpenStack to someone who's not familiar with the project. When you're using the right tools, you can stand up an OpenStack cloud in 20 minutes. Wow. So, so you've been part of the open source community for a long time. Um, and you've seen your share of projects, I'm yes. sure. Um, what have you seen over the past decade in terms of change in the open source community? I think the most fundamental change with specifically the introduction of a private cloud, hybrid cloud, uh, orchestration, system deployment, automation is compared to 10 years ago, now it's all about scale. If you are building a system that is not fully orchestrated, that is not fully automated, that is not fully monitored, today you're doing something wrong. If you are building a system that depends on people having to log into individual boxes to troubleshoot issues, you're doing something wrong. If you're not doing something that actually scales to levels that were pretty much unimaginable a decade ago, you're doing it wrong. So let's say that you aren't scaling. How do you get started doing something like that? If uh, I were to advise someone as to how to get started with scaling uh, open source technology built platforms, yes. it basically means get your hands dirty on orchestration, system deployment, and automation services. That absolutely does require a good background in the sysadmin and operation skills that you needed years ago too, but right now, that's no longer sufficient. It is about not just doing something, it is about doing something in an automated fashion that you really should get started with. And what your preferred tools for that are, that depends on your personal preference, what is good for your business or for your company. It may be Puppet, it may be Chef, it may be Juju, it may be Triple O, whatever it is that is applicable to your technology, to your platform that you're using, there is going to be an open source solution for you. Okay, so you've seen a lot of changes in the past 10 years. What, are you, what, are you, what would you like to see happen in the next 10? So in terms of the OpenStack community, I, I'm not really that much looking for a, a shift or, or a massive change in direction. I'm looking for continued evolution. I think we've been doing a fantastic job in the open source community uh, over the last 10 years. And I think we're on a fantastic path of development that despite what everyone thought 10 years ago is still accelerating. If we look at projects like the Linux kernel, like OpenStack, it's getting faster and it's getting more awesome rather than slowing down or getting any less awesome. So what I would really like to see is a continuation of that evolution, a continuation of that trend, uh, rather than a massive shift or change of direction because I think we're headed in a really, really good direction. So final question sort of to follow up on that. How do you think individuals can make that happen? Can continue that, uh, that speed of change? Oh, oh, the good thing about open source is that it, it has ridiculously lowered the barrier to entry for people to become experts in specific fields in information technology. Today, and I realize this is a limitation specifically when we look at specific regions of the world, but today if you have a working internet connection, you can become a software developer or you can become a DevOps expert or whatever it is. Compared to having to have access to say a university education or to communication channels that are available to just a very small group, which was the case 15 years ago. But now we have the ability to self-learn, teach ourselves, get involved in open communities that are freely sharing technology, ideas, thoughts, designs. So it's so much easier than it was 15 years ago to become part of this community. 
And quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned, everyone should. Everyone should seize that opportunity. I think that you are correct. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you. And have a great conference. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No problem.